I have told all my kids just about everything that I ever happened when I was growing up. They know it all. Let them tell their own kids. Not long ago, it occurred to me that I don't know much about my grandma Viola. As a child, we weren't close. I was intimidated by her. I don't know if it's her Long Island, New York, I'm not going to take any crap from anyone attitude that always scared me, or maybe it's just that I took her too seriously. Whatever the reason, I've learned that everyone has a story, and I wanted to learn more about Viola's 86-year-long story. I wanted to know about her childhood. What were her parents like? How did she meet my grandpa Bill, who I never knew? How did she survive three husbands over her lifetime and raise six kids? And finally, at 86 years old, what are her thoughts on living and dying? Viola agreed to be interviewed, so I packed up all my gear. I took a couple of days off from work and headed north from my home in Springfield, Missouri, to where she was living at the time in Plattsburgh, Missouri, at my dad's house. When I arrived, I found she'd changed her mind about the interview. She didn't want to share her story, at least not on camera, with me. She told me I should just pack up my gear and head on back home. I figured that was the end of it. I'd eat dinner with her, my dad, and my uncle Jim, who happened to be visiting at the time. Then I'd head back home. But fortunately, after dinner, as Viola wrapped up another episode of American Idol, she relented. And that's where this story begins. I'll slap you upside the head. Can you hear her okay? All right, Grandma. You ready? What'd you call me? Grandma. Oh, I thought you said Viola. Oh, <laughs> Viola if you want. I, we lived on a farm about 60 acres called Hinkley Hollow. I was number eight out of nine, so I was next to the youngest. I didn't really know my older brothers because they went to war before I ever got to know them. Yeah. Well, it was 1930s. That left Jack and Jimmy and me and Billy. And that was, we did all the work. We grew up on vegetables and fruit, organic. <laughs> we didn't even realize that we were eating organic all of our lives, because we took care of it, we planted it, we took care of it. So what else you wanna know? Well, that was a start, but of course I wanted to know more. Fortunately, Viola filled a plastic cup with boxed wine, and the conversation continued. Well, the boys used to let me play softball. We had a great big field out in front of our house, and uh, the neighborhood guys would all come around, you know, their ages, and they always let me uh, play softball with them. We used to play marbles in the, in the dirt in the yard, and um, Mom made them playhouse with me because I was the only girl and if I'd tell them they had to play house with me and she made them. <gasps> well, he liked to have parties. Um, uh, I remember the house being full of people and everybody having a good time and uh, yeah. He was tall, good looking guy too. How would you describe his personality? Uh, like a very happy person, yeah, yeah. She was um, a fat little woman. <laughs> she was very strict. She really ran the roost, you know. Everybody listened to mom, yeah. If we ever had to get hit, you had to go out and pick your own switch, and it better not be a, too small. One time I got switched and I never got hit again. My father died very young. I was six years old when he died. That's one of my biggest memories. When he died, he had a few strokes and then died. He was only 39 years old. I started to understand why my grandma was so tough. By the time she was 14 years old, her favorite person, her dad, had passed away. 
She took care of her dying mother, and she worked without compensation on a tobacco farm. She moved around the Midwest over the next several years, from Kentucky to Ohio to Missouri and back to Ohio. It was there in Dayton, she got a job as a waitress and met my grandpa Bill. Bill Burnish? Oh, he asked me for a date. I thought he was it. There was another guy that used to come in all the time that looked a lot like him. I thought it was the other guy and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> he used to tell all of our friends, oh yeah, I was driving down a road and I saw her out in the field and I took her out of the back of park because she was barefooted. <laughs> Could have killed him for you to death. Well, first of all, we lived in an apartment before, he was still in college when we got married. He had a, a, quite a few months to go. So we lived in a little apartment. Then when he graduated, his, his father and stepmother came down and got us and took us to Long Island because his father had a summer home that let us live at for two years. Yeah, until we saved up enough money to buy a house. Long Island was great. We went to parties and we always danced. He taught me how to jitterbug right in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, and the, the girls thought it was so funny, like Kitty and Cheryl and Christine watching us doing the jitterbug. <laughs> he was a wonderful dancer. He taught me how to dance. Yeah, we had some good times. Went to a lot of big, big parties with Loco. I mean, I, I made all my own long dresses and I made his ties to match the material. And he even bought me a mink stole because all the other women had mink stoles. <laughs> he was a fantastic businessman, fantastic. He did great in Lilco. He went up, 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 up. By the time he died, he was right under the vice president. Yeah, he was very dedicated. And a lot of, I say thousands of people, were stealing the electricity because they knew how to turn the things back. He, he was the one that uh, made the little thing that they could put on each one of them that they couldn't turn, they couldn't take it off, and they couldn't get it. He came up with that. He was threatened by the, Ruffy, the Russian mafia, the Italian mafia, the Irish mafia. They were all going to kill him because he was taking away all their electricity. So there's a lot of mafia. Scared me to death. Are you kidding? Duh. Long Island? Oh, Mickey, could, Mickey and the boys could tell you about the Italians. Whoa. Jeez. I could tell Viola adored my grandpa. It was nice to hear a little bit about their relationship and his personality. I never knew him because at the age of 35 in 1983, he died which at that time, I would have only been one year old. I wanted to hear, in Viola's own words, what it felt like to grieve the loss of her husband. But rightfully so, I'm not so sure she really wanted to share that experience. He, he was diagnosed with cancer in November, and he died in January. What was that like for you? When he died. Oh, it was horrible, honey. What do you mean? <laughs> I just, I want to hear. I just want to hear what you have to say about it. I, I, I Oh, I, gee, thanks. Fi finally, he got died. Duh. <laughs> what do you expect me to say, you d idiot? You <laughs> ask a stupid question <laughs> like that. As, <laughs> as, Grandma, that, that's the ask thing. Mickey. I, he, he came out there when I was crying all the time, and you and Billy took me bowling to make to get me out of bed because I was so sad, yeah. I want to tell you something. Everybody, everybody that knew us said that we had the best well-behaved children they had ever seen, and they were because I must have been like my mother, because they, they listened to me. <laughs> and I, Dad always said I wasn't strict enough, but 
they, they were always great. They were wonderful children. Well, All Dad. of them. Daddy did a lot of sports with the boys. Yeah. And I was always playing with the kids. Hopscotch with the girls, you know. And uh, Mother May I, every summer. I remember summers on end of Mother May I. Yes. On the front porch there. Yes. That walkway yeah. up to the front porch. We played all kinds of games. And I used to go, love going sleigh riding with them. Up at Bread and Cheese Hollow Road, we, we were on a hill. At, right. You know, a nice, wonderful hill that we could go down and up. And great, yeah. Viola has been married three times and has outlived them all. She took care of each one as they slowly passed away. First, my grandpa Bill. Then when she was living in Missoula, she met another Bill, Bill Barnett. Then how did you meet the next Bill? The girls told me I should get a boyfriend. <laughs> and I signed up with this thing, you know, where you, you put your name in, and, and that's how I met him. And we went together for a while, and then we got married. That was another mistake. Big mistake. What did Bill Barnett do for a living? He was an a optometrist, yeah. But he didn't manage his money well at all. And, he only married me because he thought I had money, because Mickey and I had a business, and that's the only reason he married me. He was a creep. But I took care of him anyhow when he was dying. I guess out of three husbands, there's bound to be at least one bad apple. Fortunately, her third husband, Don, was anything but that. He was such a sweetheart. Anything I wanted to do, was, the only thing he disagreed with was when Mickey would come home and we'd go gambling. He, I, th he was, I think he was jealous that I was going gambling with you because he didn't like to gamble, so he stayed home. I said, I'm going. You want to go? Fine. Otherwise, stay here. I'm going. My son comes home to see me. I'm going with him. <laughs> I didn't care. Uh, didn't he have to ask you to marry him a few times? Yeah, twice. I said yes the first time, then we had a fight, and I said, get the hell out, so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk to him for about a month, but then we got back together. <laughs> don't so, tell, you don't tell me what to do. <laughs> He was, he was a wonderful, wonderful man. I loved him the most. He treated me the best. He treated me like gold. I loved him. Are we done yet? No, no, we got just well, almost done. Well, hurry up, I want a cigarette and I, I gotta, go, to, I gotta go to the bathroom. Go ahead. At Viola's request, it was about time to wrap up but I still wanted to know her thoughts on some of life's bigger questions, on religion, on life, and on death. I've been baptized three times. Uh, well, of course, I was baptized a Catholic first, then I was baptized in that creek, and then I was baptized a Baptist too, right up in, right up in the front of the church. I took care of my husband dying. I took care of my other husband. Then my little brother Billy came to live with me here, and uh, he developed throat cancer. I took care of him. I've taken care of people all my life. And Donald? You raised six kids, too. Yes. Well, after when my little brother got sick, and I remember standing in my kitchen over here in the, my house, and I started laughing, I said, God, you've got some sense of humor <laughs> because of all of <laughs> Another one, what didn't I do right all this time that I got another one to take care of? What do I need to, you know, about life? What What's your advice? What's, what's, you know? It would depend on the individual and their situation in their life. You just don't, there's just no you know, this rule is for you because you're 35 and you have children or whatever. No, 
It's, n it's not that blocked up. What are some lessons that you've learned in life then for yourself? Things that maybe you wish you wouldn't have done or that you would have done? I don't know. I've been perfect all my life. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> the wine is kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have hardly any regrets. Well, maybe Barnett, he was the only one who was the worst one. <laughs> that was a mistake. That, if you want to talk about mistakes, that was a mistake. But I made the choice, so I have nobody to blame but myself. So, you know. <laughs> What are your thoughts on dying or what happens after you die? You know what? I'm not worried about it at all. Not at all. I do, I do not worry about it. No, sir. I, I think God has forgiven me for all the Prince sins that I have ever committed because every, every night when I go to bed, in case I did something wrong, today said the one words had the wrong thought, forgive me. I, I'm not afraid to die at all. No, nope. I got good. I know there's angels up there watching over me all the time. I believe in angels. <laughs> After the interview, Viola expressed to me how happy she was that she went through with it. And I was happy to know a little bit more about the experiences that have shaped her character. To me, she's no longer just an intimidating lady from Long Island. She's a Midwestern farmer, a sister to seven. She's organic, a caretaker to her dying mother, and an orphan by the age of 14. She's a teenage tobacco field worker. She's a long-suffering wife of three deceased husbands, a mother of six, a friend to many. She's a Catholic, a Baptist, a holy roller. She's a bowler, a smoker, a drinker, and a gambler. She's many things, known and unknown. And also, she's my grandma.